Hey there gamers, Retro Rob here, and today we're going to take a second look at the Game Shell by Clockwork Pie. Yes, I had a couple complaints about it. Uh, one of them, of course, was about not having enough buttons, maybe to play like, say, PlayStation 1 games, which it does quite well otherwise. Uh, the other thing was the SNES, of course. Uh, you were lacking the bumpers, and this runs Super Nintendo games really well. So I thought about it, and I thought, you know, what if they offered like an extra product maybe that you could add on to the system, or, you know, a different button set with some extra buttons on it, or maybe if I could build something, or maybe if, maybe, I don't know. I just opened this box right here and <laughs> used the freaking buttons that came with it. Ladies and gentlemen, the light shell. As I always mention, please have some clippers ready. Do this the right way and it will look more professionally done. So make sure you're clipping these out. Okay, I believe all of our parts are freed. Let's take a look. What do we need? To build the light key module, you will need parts LK1, LK2, LK3, and M6. That's right, M6. Generally, I assemble the shell first and then start putting the pieces in, but in this case, I'm going to put the buttons in first because they have a hard time clearing once you get everything together. You gotta be... Be careful how you put it together too. They will try to snap out on you. So you really want to keep those down. Because what you don't want is what's inevitably going to happen to me. Which is the... Oh, it didn't happen this time. But uh, inevitably I get those buttons just kind of stuck in there. Didn't happen this time. So I got lucky. See that right there, that connector? When you look at the shell, there is a spot for it. Now, I'm gonna close it up like this. And I did that vertically on purpose. And then check all your buttons. Make sure they all work. Everything's tight. So this part is complete. Now, let's get it onto the game shell. Next, let's attach the light key to the back of the developer's case. Some notes here. It says clockwork upside down. This is the back of the unit, so the, not the glossy side with the buttons. This is the back of the unit. Here are the tabs that attach it. I'm just going to slide them on like this. Notice that the tab is facing this way. I'll attach the second one. I know it seems kind of funny that it's upside down, but that's the way it goes. All right, next, grab this cable. This is the long one. It has six wires on it. If I'm lucky, I won't even put it in wrong. There we go. There, you want that firmly in there. It says GPIO output. Now I'm sure there's some flex in where you can put this. However, in the diagram, it has it sitting one row below, I believe. Here we go. Let's go on. You might be building at this time, uh, so you can watch my building video if you'd like, uh, and just add this to the end, but basically, everything just goes back in place. Take these little squeegees out. And I'm going to try to 
transplant everything. Without doing too much damage to it. Transfer the game shell components to the developer's case. Take a moment real quick to show you that the wires are coming in through here, through the back, and I'm putting the battery down. You see how there is a space there. It's a good time to double check your lines too. Make sure everything is clear and that it's not going to get smushed. Smushed is a technical term. Now that's most of the way into the case, I do want to show you something. This is the wire uh, coming in from the light key. And it plugs into this guy here, the keypad. Out of here, D-pad. And it just plugs into the bottom of it. Now, this is a problem that I ran into. I did not completely, cleanly cut everything here. So now, it's not sticking in there decent. So, remember what I mentioned earlier? <laughs> yeah, I gotta go clear that off. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, now that I have that cleared out, I can put the cable in. See how it is metal side up. You see how I can see that metal? That's the way it goes. If you don't see the metal on the top, you know you're putting it in the wrong way. Push that in. Notice how I have the blade retracted. that in a little bit. There we go. It is now connected. You know, I didn't find a really great spot to route the cable, so I'm going to try routing them underneath the battery. Uh, the problem is there's a pinch point over here, and I don't want it to get in that pinch point, and I can't get around it without smushing the cable, so I'm going to try right here. If you guys have a better way of doing that, let me know in the comments. I would appreciate it. All right. Over here. Again, really watch your cabling. Make sure that it is not pinching anywhere. Nobody likes a pinched cable. All right, we'll see how that sits. Yep, feels pretty good. Let's take it for a test spin. All right, so here we are in Jumping Flash, and it has a very simple use of the trigger button, and that, of course, is so that I can look around, and it helps me find the various jetpacks. And as you can see, I'm pressing this button and holding it, and I can free look. Therefore, I will consider that mission successful. The light key has worked at restoring my faith in this thing's ability to play PlayStation. It works for the SNES too. Yay. All right, so the light key, it did perform the function for which it was meant. It added enough buttons so that I could play PlayStation pretty darn handily, and this is a great game system to play it on. And it also helps the Super Nintendo and any game such as fighting games in MAME where you want some extra buttons. Uh, this developer's back does add a little bit of bulk to the back, but I think it's probably worth it for the extras that you get. It does also make a nice little stand for it, which is pretty cool. By the way, if you're wondering why they call it light key, it is of course because the buttons light up when you punch them. Pretty cool, right? Anyway, yes, that was quite successful and added functionality. I'm happy with it. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Speaking of thumbs up, please thumbs up this video if it helped you and subscribe for more. And I will see you in a couple days, probably with another error that I made in a video. Bye.